Hello and welcome to a special More Than A Game uh, video. Uh, we are previewing the MLS All-Star Game, which takes place on Wednesday this week. We're recording this on Tuesday the 18th of July. I'm with uh, Steve Kelly. How are you, Steve? Yeah, good, mate. Yourself? Yeah, good, thank you. Uh, been been away a bit last week, so nice to get a bit of a breather in and, and ready and raring to go now. Pre-season's back and... The season's just around the corner. We've got it all to look forward to again, haven't we? Um, <laughs> and I'm with, I, I, yeah, I'm with Harry as well. Harry, how are you doing? Yeah, good, thanks, mate. I think, like you, finally starting to miss the football a little bit now. Oh, yeah, I don't, don't know if I'm starting to miss it. Just, you know, having to <laughs> having to get ourselves back up for it. Um, so, yeah, as I mentioned, this is a... Um, Special show about the MLS All Star game. It's uh, the MLS All Stars take on Arsenal on Wednesday evening in the US in DC. Uh, Thursday, very early hours on Thursday morning on in the UK and Europe. Harry, you've you've written a piece for more than a game. It's live on the Substack right now. People should definitely go and go and read it, and we'll we'll have a link in the description. And it's basically a a pick of the pick of the bunch, as you put it, from. The MLS All Stars. Um, you picked out a few players. Who are you most excited to to see or, or see what they can do against Arsenal? Well, I think looking through that list, there's a lot of attacking midfielders in there, and probably the pick of the bunch, you'd say, there's there's two really: Thiago Almada from Atlanta United, uh, first MLS player, first active MLS player to win the World Cup last year with Argentina, and he's having another great season. Uh, most assists in the league. I think he's, he's near the top for goals as well. Um, and then the reigning MVP as well, Hani Mukhtar from Nashville. Uh, similar players, I think, in a sense, uh, kind of both got that goal threat from that number 10 position. Both can play a little bit further forward. Uh, Almada, I think, is, is probably the pick of the bunch in terms of his age as well. I think he's been linked with the likes of Napoli, Man United in the past as well, before he went to Atlanta. So it's going to be really interesting to see how he does against really top level European opposition. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of a lot of scouts watching him. But yeah, I think that those are probably the, the pick of the bunch, I would say. It's it's exciting to see how these kind of how all these attacking midfielders, I think in, in the piece, we named six players, four of them are attacking midfielders. It's going to be interesting to see how they kind of link up against really top level opposition. Yeah, I was going to say to you, Patrick, sorry, and also Harry as well, I noticed uh, a player who I always watched quite a bit a few years ago was uh, Lucio Acosta. He was a DC, I think, when Wayne was there. Um, I always really liked him. I always thought he was maybe destined for going to a European league, but it never really seemed like he's at Cincinnati now, isn't he? Yeah, so played with Rooney at, played with Rooney at DC. He's now at Cincinnati and they're eight points clear at the top of the Supporters' Shield standing. He's got the best regular season record in MLS and again like the other two he's been he's up there in terms of goals and assists uh, plays as a number 10 and just yeah really entertaining player to watch goal threat uh, yeah great dribbler so yeah it'd be interesting to see a lot of these players as, as I say playing against playing against you know Premier League title challengers from last season don't get to see them playing at that level quite so often so it'd be interesting to see how they do yeah, I think um, you mentioned Almeida, who's, who's been just the, the star performer, really, in MLS this season. And, and he definitely seems, I mean, there still could be a move for him. You know, MLS do have a transfer window. They, they still could lose him at Atlanta. It does seem unlikely, but he won't be. He's very, very unlikely that he'll be there again next year. Um, a January move seems seems likely to Europe. And, you know, if I'm sure if both our clubs were in a better position, we'd love, uh, we'd love to be involved in that fight. But this is the thing, you've got to go and, and get those talents when they're young, especially from South America. You look at look at Caicedo at Brighton, you know, he's another Chelsea are putting another bid for him today, apparently, and Gedby not back. And it's looking at they want in 80, 90 million for him, aren't they? Or 100 million, even. So this is the level as well. Club, get to. Sorry, Patrick. Do you think clubs might, in regards to Almeida, obviously, in the, the MLS season finishes obviously a lot earlier than the Premier League and European competitions? Do you think there's an option maybe for him like a like a six month loan somewhere else maybe rather than someone taking a chance on him straight away? Possibly, but I think I think now his stock is so high. Like Harry mentioned, he won the World Cup last year. He was part of the squad. Um, he's just been so good. He's been he's yeah. been brilliant. He scores all types of goals. He's and I think Atlanta would probably. I think there's going to be a market there that 
clubs are going to know that he's a good player. And at 22, there's no real downside to buying him because I, as much as, yeah, there's money in MLS, I don't think Atlanta are going to be able to, like, charge much more than 20 million. Um, mm. So that it does open up a certain thing where clubs have got the money. They'll be like, well, we can we can risk that 20 million with a small down payment, for example, rather than maybe loan. It might be an option for some clubs or they may even buy him, then loan him back and say, let go and have another year in, in MLS. I think that could well be be an option for him. But like Harry says, it's and he details in the piece, this is the perfect type of opposition to test yourself against in terms of the the biggest elite players. Where yeah. it comes to, and again, as, as Harry's mentioned, we've got six players named and, and four of them are attacking midfielders. And the interesting is for Rooney, how he fits that together. Um, when you were looking through the list of defenders, there's no one really that stands out from a defensive aspect in MLS. But MLS does have a lot of these number 10s, these creative players, or these players like Mukhtar or Lucas Zellerayan, who has just been brilliant for Columbus Crew for the last few years now. And he scores screamers week in, week out. You know, it's it's how you then fit all those those cogs in. And he said at the end of the day, yeah. it's an exhibition game. I'm sure it'll be more about, you know, 45 minutes for one team, 45 minutes for another. And be interested how they fit together. But at the back, Harry, you picked out Roman Berkey as the, as the goalkeeper. He's been fantastic for St. Louis. And, uh, you know, they're, they're made in season MLS. They're top of the Eastern Conference as it stands. Um, Berkey kind of had a fall from grace at Dortmund. You know, he was really highly rated a few years ago and then quite very quickly fell down the pecking order, really, and now ended up in MLS. But he's showing he's showing what a good goalkeeper he is as well, isn't he? Oh, he's, he's been absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I think, as, as you've mentioned, they're, they're doing brilliantly in their first season in the league. But if you look at some of the kind of the underlying stats, they, they've they allowed a lot of chances against them and he's had to bail them out quite a lot. If you look at things like the expected goals he's faced, the, the amount of, I think he's fourth in the in the league for the amount of shots he's faced, uh, but he's top for the goals prevented. He's been absolutely brilliant. And having that kind of experience, obviously playing in the Champions League for Dortmund, playing internationally for Switzerland, uh, real leader of that team and yeah absolutely deserves his spot in the MLS also his team has been fantastic for, for his club I was going to say for a team who are top as well they do concede a lot of chances I've obviously noticed that it's made about 60% saves and about a 75% save percentage something like that um, which is which is really high because if you look at other countries and other teams around Europe it's very rare that goalkeepers who are top of the league get that many yeah. saves the league so it's concentration must be really up there as well and Obviously, he's played at a high level at Dortmund, and uh, he's still quite young for a goalkeeper as well. Thirty-two years of age. It's not. It's not. It's not. He's probably still at least another four or five years in the game as well. So, yeah, definitely. And uh, he's a player who's kind of been there and done it in Europe. He may eventually come back one day, I guess. But a player who is yeah. very much in the MLS, brought up in MLS, it is Jesus Ferreira. Um, He's a player that I, I saw him live at the World Cup. I think he played one game for the United States at the World Cup and it was against the Netherlands, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and that was it. I think he got 45 minutes. He got dragged off at half time, and, and you saw the, the golf in quality. But then this season, in fairness to him, he's having a fantastic season. I think he's on. Uh, he's he's just been in the team of the tournament at the Gold Cup, hasn't he, Harry? And, um, you know, he's only he's only in his early 20s, 20, 22 um, and he's in, he's on fire for FC Dallas. So, um, Harry, you you picked him as the striker. Would you think he could have a real impact on and maybe make a name for himself in this game and and show that yes, okay, the golfing quality is a big step up when you're playing against the Netherlands at the World Cup in a in a last sixteen tie. But maybe just interest some teams who I don't know are in the Premier League and are cash strapped and maybe need to look at a a third choice striking option or second choice striking option. Yeah, I think so. I think whenever you're looking, whenever you're looking at these MLS All Star games, generally, there's a lot of players that are aging and that have kind of, as you say, been there and done it in Europe, or perhaps not quite cut it in Europe and made an early move. But I think with Ferreira, like Almada, he's in a different category where he's young enough to still, still have something to achieve in Europe if he does make that move. Um, I think I said in the piece that since he's been at the Gold Cup, Dallas have lost three out of their five games without him. Uh, he scored seven goals at the Gold Cup. That's a, re that's a joint record for a United States player. I think the only player who's ever done that in a single tournament before was Clinton Dempsey. Um, and it's been a really yeah, it's been a really good experience for him, I imagine, because 
the US picked a really uh, kind of young uh, America based side for that Gold Cup. So they weren't disrupting too many players pre seasons for European clubs. So he got the chance to kind of lead the line there. And yeah, he absolutely took it. As you say, seven goals throughout the tournament, team of the tournament. Absolutely one to watch in this game. And I would say, yeah, moving forward, there's got to be clubs with their eyes with their eyes on him. Uh, like you said, with Almada, the MLS sides are generally not going to be too strong in terms of their valuations. I wouldn't have thought demanding too much money for even these young players who are impressing. Uh, there's absolutely going to be eyes on him. So. I was going to say he's not just he's not just a goal scorer though, is he? Harry he can he is very good at creating chances as well, isn't he? Yeah, he's played from the right. He's played from the right quite a lot for the for the US national team. And that's interesting as well, because obviously they've got the World Cup coming up in three years. They're looking to develop a, a young team. Say so he's only 22 years old. Um, talking about the MLS All-Stars, playing against Arsenal. Uh, they've got Balogun as well, who's just declared for the US. So it'll be interesting to see uh, if he gets on the pitch for Arsenal. Uh, I'm sure he's going to get great reception if he does. Uh, and the fact that Ferreira can play wide as well does give them kind of it gives them the chance to develop a really young, exciting front line with that World Cup three years away. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It, yeah, seems, well, a, seems, seems an exciting player. Yeah, I think he's one of those that maybe the, the quality right right now isn't there. You know, um, Ricardo Pepe, I believe, was at Dallas a few seasons ago and he, he had a brilliant breakthrough season in MLS and he's only young. And then he just made a bad move. He went to Augsburg in, in the Bundesliga and... Um, it just seemed a weird move at the time because, yes, the Bundesliga is almost a perfect league, but it feels like those players need to be going somewhere that it's a team that's that's set up to to facilitate them. And it seems a weird move at the time. He then went on loan to a uh, may have been Gron Groningen in last season, and now he's going to PSV. Oh, he's gone to PSV on permanently. So, you know that he's really impressed in the Everton visit, but he just couldn't quite settle in the Bundesliga. It's like he needed that middle ground, and I feel maybe that's where Ferreira is. Or he goes to a, a championship club like Daryl DK did a few seasons ago, or or goes to a, a a Premier League team like I said that maybe need a a backup striker, but someone who isn't going to be starting every game, but someone who can grow into it. He's not quite ready yet, but he's he's definitely got talent. And I think, uh, I, think I agree. I think I agree. I think he's um, I think he's at that age as well where he doesn't really. I don't think there's any rush for him to move. I think no. he's at a good age. He's had a good season. Obviously, ten goals a season, in eighteen games. Um, like we, like you said, we've seen many players over the over the last couple of years make moves, and they probably shouldn't have made them yet. I think, I think for me, he was quite a late bloomer as well, wasn't he? I don't think he was like one of them who's just they've talked about. He's had to work his way up as well, hard work. So, I think another year in the MLS, and then maybe, maybe a loan or a, or a, or a loan with an option to buy from a club, maybe something like that would be an option for him. Yeah, possibly. And just finally on on the MLS side of it, before we switch a bit of focus to Arsenal. Uh, Wayne Rooney is the manager. That's good. the game is in DC, DC United coach. Uh, great opportunity for Wayne. He's he's doing brilliantly over there. I think. I mean, he's gone under the radar. Um, having mentioned in the piece, but you know, he he took over a team that was pretty much heading for the bottom of the league, the, the wooden spoon as they call it in MLS, because there's no relegation last season, this time last year, and. Okay, it took a little while to get going, but there was there was no real pressure. That's the that's the good thing with MLS is he was allowed to kind of set in a style last year without having to think about results as such because it doesn't really matter. You're not going to go down. And this season, they're starting yeah. to see the fruits of that. And there's a bit of inconsistency. They went into the break DC after a four 0 loss to New England, but New England are one of the best teams in MLS and have been for a few years under Bruce Arena. And you know you start, but they've had some really good results. They beat Cincinnati three 0 at the end of June, so. What do you think, Steve, as an opportunity for, for Rooney to go up against Arteta, you know, to go up against, well, a former Everton, uh, not a teammate, but, you know, both Everton players, but there's that connection there, but both Premier League greats in their own right, in a, in a sense, or, or stalwarts, maybe not greats in the Arteta's case. But do you think that's the perfect yeah. opportunity he needs to maybe remind UK audiences that he's, that he's still doing well, he's still doing a good job over there? Yeah, I think I think from speaking to a few people who watch DC on a regular basis, um, it seems like they're trying to play the right the right way. Um, sometimes a few comments I've seen, he's got got you on the edge of his seat the way they play from the back. Um, I think I've seen an interview which he done with Baz quite a while ago, obviously on Toffee TV, where he um, mentions that he does take a lot from the, the Pep side of the game, and 
liking to play out play out with the ball. Um, but I think I think from his point of view, obviously he left a dif- difficult job in Derby, which has took took a real toll on him. I think. So I think for him to go over to the US and go back to DC, he knows the club, played for the club, he'll know some of the players still. He's trying to introduce younger players to the team as well, which is good. And um, we, we have a bit of experience with like your Ben Tekes, your Lewis O'Briens, who he's brought in as well. Uh, I think Lewis O'Brien, by the way, was an absolute brilliant signing from Rudy. I think I think uh, since he went over there, he's done done really well. Yeah. And I think obviously Forrest, Forrest are trying to sell him now. Yeah. Um, but I think from Wayne's point of view, if he can keep doing what he's doing, um, maybe like this season can be a bit of a, a start of a bit of start of way making them way up to the top, and then hopefully he can get noticed as well. I think with Wayne Rooney, he's one of those people. I think he'll always be he'll always be on the radar of clubs due to who he is as well. So, I think good luck to him if he's doing really well and um, may well continue as well. Yeah, it, it definitely seems like a smart, smart move now he's made this and hopefully he can be there for the next, at least the next year, you know, at least till the end of next season, uh, get yeah. through 2024 and, and see where he's at and he might then be ready even for a Premier League move and I think it's the sensible thing to do for his career as well and he's, he's going over and experiencing a new league, maybe not a new language, but definitely several new cultures because of the the nature of the United States as well, the nature of DC, it's a very culturally diverse place. So, yeah, it seems to be working out really well. You might go for the Everton job in January if Everton usually do what they do in soccer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there'll be some coming up at that point. Um, so very quickly, we'll touch just to finish off on, on Arsenal. They're the, they're the opponents. It's it's going to be a warm up game for them. I imagine Arteta is going to feel probably two different 11s. Um, Two players who, well, one player who definitely seems like he'll play is Declan Rice. He's been featured heavily in all their promo and all of the MLS promo as well. Harry, are you looking forward to seeing him in an Arsenal shirt? Finally, it seems like it dragged on this deal. Are you, are you looking forward to seeing that happen? Yeah, yeah, as you say, it does, it does seem like it's taken forever to complete. But I think Rice, more than any of the other Arsenal signings, obviously, you just mentioned there might be a couple. Yuri and Timber, apparently, he's in the squad, so he might make his debut as well. Kai Havertz has already played in their last friendly. I think Rice, out of, out of all the signings Arsenal have made, he's the most ready-made. We know where he's going to slot in. We know what he's good at. He's going to take Party's place at the base of that midfield and you'd think be a big upgrade, really. Um, it will be interesting to see Arsenal generally, how, how they set up. As you said, they probably are going to give game time to it. You know, two different 11s, but it does seem like they've got, not not problems, but they've got kind of things to sort out in this pre-season, having bought Havertz in. We talked about Havertz a couple of weeks ago when the when the move was done. Still not entirely sure where he's going to slot in. We talked about whether he might play on the left of midfield, whether he might play up front. Then you've got Timber coming in. He's played at centre-back and he's played at right-back as well. Um, Arteta seems like he's going for the, the same kind of thing that, that Guardiola did with Man City last year in terms of bringing his fullbacks inside. Uh, so he seems well suited to that. Um, but yeah, a few little a few little issues to solve, I think, in terms of where these where the new signings slot in for Arsenal. Then you've got the likes of Balogun competing. He wants game time going back to the United States. Um, it's difficult to imagine him being a backup striker to Jesus next season. I've seen Inter linked with him. Uh, so Arteta said he's going to get a chance to impress in pre-season and then see where it goes from there in terms of maybe a transfer for him. But yeah, there's definitely a few things for Arsenal to, to work out. So it's going to be interesting to see how they sell. Steve, you, you, uh, yeah, do you think um, you're looking forward to seeing how Arsenal develop over the summer? Well, not over the summer, but heading into the new season? Yeah, I think... They've gone in, they've done the business early. Looks like from reading a few things, they're not finished with the business either. Uh, it seems like they might go in for one more. I imagine that might be a striker if they sell Balogun uh, mm. to Inter. I think 50 million is is very, very expensive, which Arsenal are asking for Balogun. I know he had a good season in France last season, but um, well, I think they've 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 Declan Rice is a huge signing for me. I think what he can add to that midfield is steeliness, his strength, is 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 uh, directness and his leadership as well. He can carry the ball really well. He's good at reading the game. And obviously, Timber as well. I think there's talk of maybe Ben White doing like a John Stones type role this season and at Arsenal as well. Um, because uh, Timber's a very good player again. He can play right back, centre back. He can also play DM if he needed as well. If if you want to go away from home and maybe do play a different way. Uh, but I think 
I think Artes is doing, doing the right things. They spent a lot of money since he's been there, uh, so he will need to start delivering soon as a manager. But um, it looks like there's talk of Kai Havertz playing in the eighth, maybe, for Arsenal this season, and uh, next to Odegaard being ahead of him. So um, I think Arsenal will definitely challenge this season. I think with the likes of the, the Declan Rice sign, and I think it's it, this this transfer window for Arsenal reminds me a bit of what Liverpool did when they got Van Dijk, Allison, players like that. I think they've done the business early, uh, and they and they they're definitely going to challenge City again this season, I imagine. But um, I don't think we've even seen what Manchester City are going to do yet. So yeah, brilliant. Uh, yeah, so that's it for for this video. Um, as I said, Harry's piece is live on the Substack now. That's uh, mtag.substack.com. There'll be a link in the description, a link to the article as well. Uh, also, as Steve touched on, we did a bit on Julian Timber and how he might fit in at Arsenal as well. So um, Steve mentioned there he can play a few positions. Alfie Biggs, who's our uh, scouting columnist, he did some really great analysis of Julian Timber last week and where he's going to fit in and that's a free article as well so free subscribers can go and read to that uh go and read that make sure that you sign up for the substack it's uh it's free to read um it, you can just be a general member you'll get three articles a week with that including our roundup shows like this one and if you want to upgrade your membership you can upgrade to a free seven day trial as well and, and view all our archive pieces and, and just see if you like it and try before you buy um so yeah make sure you sign up check it out and thanks for watching